Advance could be the to me, so I wish you are back for another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection Review, issue number 72. Yeah, I'm still doing these. And uh, this time we're doing the USS Enterprise NCC 1701. So now we've got all the classic original ships. Yeah. And as per usual, you get the nice glossy magazine and the ship itself, but more on that in a little while. So we'll get cracking onto this one. Of course, we get the specifications. Registered number NCC 1701A. Uh, class Constitution. Uh, launched 2286. Retired 2293. Length 305 metres. Dex 21. Crew 430. Top speed, warp 8 estimated. Weaponry 9. Dual phaser banks. Two photon torpedo launchers. Captain James T. Kirk. And we got a, quite a lovely CG render of the ship there. Really nice. Um, we also get a picture of the galley. Um, or rather the kitchen, sorry. Uh, this is before, just before replicators. I think they could still replicate drinks. But, you know, actual food is still prepared by the crew. Um, then we've got some various images from the uh, Star Trek 5 there. Star Trek 6. My favourite bridge of any starship is this one. Um... Because it looks like a bridge, you know. Um, as it says here, the Enterprise A had several different bridge modules during its lifetime. The final configuration featured darker tones and saw the outer walls almost completely covered with display monitors. They also had a clock above uh, each, um, it's almost each station as well. And if you look carefully, each clock is the correct time. You know when you get um, continuity errors, um, you know when the cut back and forth, you look at those clocks in that, that, that movie, they are perfectly in time every time. You know, you, you, you wouldn't think of like something really simple like uh, a clock, and you also have the chimes at midnight as well, which is really cool. Then we've got the topographical section here, which is always nice to see. Um, Yep, which is pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, uh, the use of a suffix on the ship's registry was only granted to the most distinguished ships. The NCC-1701 registry was kept for the next four Enterprises, even though they belonged to different classes. The Enterprise A was... Featured a vertical warp core that was similar to the one fitted to the Galaxy Class USS Enterprise 1701D of 80 years later. The warp core of the Enterprise Air was exposed, and crew members could walk down its full length and access from engineering on deck 15. Uh, three members of the Enterprise Air's crew held the rank of captain in 2255. Uh, 2285, sorry. These were Captain Kirk, after the demotion, demotion from Admiral, Captain Spock, and Captain Montgomery Scott. Sorry, I'm a bit sniffly today. I do apologise. Um, phase of warning. Initial, internal security was beefed up on the Enterprise A in a com um, comparison with its predecessor. The ship's internal sensors were calibrated to sound an alarm if an energy weapon was fired above the level of stun anywhere on the ship. Spock had a painting in his quarters, on the wall of his quarters, about the Enterprise Air, a depiction of Adam and Eve being exiled from the Garden of Eden by the 20th century, fo 20th century fox, 20th century artist Mark Chargill, Chargall. Spock chose to hang it in his, in his wall to remind, as a reminder that all things must end. And then we've got filming the Enterprise here. Um, which is, I, I always love these sections. Um, Journey filming it, you know, using different mounts there. And pretty cool. Uh, Here's the Enterprise here. Model made its debut in Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. The filming model was the same one that had been used in the first three movies, although it was repainted before the fourth film. And then we've got Nicholas Meyer um, talking about Star Trek IV and VI. Um, which is cool. Nicholas Mayer was involved with three st three best Star Trek movies, including the original, including starring the original cast. He helped craft grappling adventure stories, real character depth, turning the franchise into a huge success at the box office. 
Um, and then we've got images from Star Trek for that, which is one of the most famous scenes in Star Trek. And the punk goes like that to Captain Kirk and uh, Admiral Kirk and Spock. And Spock just, you know, Vulcan there pinches him, which is really cool. Actually, that song is um, on YouTube in its entirety, which is pretty cool. Um, then we've got Practice Exploding, and then we've got um, Denny Martin. Denny Martin Finn was an assistant to Mayer in 1990. He co-wrote the script for Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, and Mayer credits him with coming up with many innovative, innovative ideas for the film. Also, Leonard Moy had a hand in the uh, story as well. Um, let's put, yeah, just to position that there we are. And then we're going into Star Trek VI there. We've got General Chang as played by Christopher Plummer. And then we've got the famous mind melt scene with Volaris. And then we've got, uh, I think, so then we've got Maya directing um, Leonard Nimoy there. And then we've got on screen. The first appearance was Star Trek. Uh, Star Trek for the Voyage Home. Last appearance is Star Trek Six: The Discovery Country. Designed by Andrew Prober and Richard Taylor. Uh, trivia. A newly built Constitution class was renamed the USS Enterprise 1701A in honour of the illustrious predecessor. It's never stated on screen, but Gene Roddenberry once suggests that he had been originally called the USS Yorktown. This is the name of the central starship in Roddenberry's first Star Trek proposal to the studio in ABC 1964, before he changed it to the Enterprise. The Star Trek Next Generation Technical Manual uh, also states the Enterprise had already been originally called Yorktown because apparently it's the ship that's um, that sends the message to, to staff at headquarters you know about cre creating a solar sailor actor David Wan appeared in two consecutive Star Trek films as two different characters he played Federation diplomat Sun John Talbot who was taken hostage on Nimbus 3 in Star Trek 5 and played Klingon Chancellor Gorkon in Star Trek 6 the name Gorkon was taken from blending of the names, the last names of uh, Mikhail Gorbachev and Abraham Lincoln. Also, as well, he played um, uh, Gul Madred in Star Trek Next Generation episode Chain of Command, and he was in a Doctor Who episode. Uh, Lawrence Lickenbill, who played Cyborg, his real life son in law to Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball, who's. Um, Desilu Productions Company sponsored the first two seasons of the original series in 1960. And then we get a nice graphic on the back there. So, all in all, a quite a good magazine, really. Um, now, onto the model. Here we go. And, for one thing, it's the right colour. We've got Aztec in. And I do like the fact that they've put this in, in black and not put the red outline out, out on the other side of it. Because, there it is, put it down there, I was looking at it, comparing these last night. Because when they did it for the uh, refit, where's the camera, there we are, um, it looks a bit odd. Yeah, but more for that comparison in a moment. Um, they have blackened the nacelles somewhat, although the light piping is picking up the blue. But when you look at it at a certain angle, it's still black, which is nice. Actually, I quite like that, actually, because it looks like it's going to warp. Quite cool. Um, yeah, with the weird blue that was in the uh, other one. Um, yeah, so we can see the the Buzzard Collectors have been painted in black, but again, it's picking up the light piping on, on this side here. Let me just cover it up. There you go, you can see the black there. Actually, I quite like that. It's not too bad. So certain angles, it's it's black, and other angles, when it catches the light, it's blue, so it looks like it's going to warp. So that's quite cool. Um, one thing I will say is they haven't painted in the... Um, sections of the nacelles there these register numbers are a little bit too big but for the size of the model i'm not complaining however i'm gonna to have to get this out now anyway on this one they are incredibly small i don't know if the camera's even going to pick that up but that's the right size and these are a little bit too big um as we're comparing it look you can see they've painted it in on there but not on there which is a m bit of a problem um, but all in all, I think they've done a good job this time around. Like I said, the painting with the Aztec in on there it looks really good. Um, the underside, 
that is in the wrong place. It should be just in this section here, just above the phaser bank, which is, as you can see on the front cover, it's just above the phaser bank, right there, look. And this, to put it, and it's too small, it needs to be a little bigger. So they put it in the wrong place, which is irritating. Um, that they've got that right this time because it's missing off this one, but that's again that's too big as well. Um, but it's really good actually. Um, there's an obvious mold line in there, which is not so bad on this one, as you can see there. Um, Yeah, I, comparisonly, oh, they've had an extra detail on the bottom, which is missing off this one. Um, comparatively, then, I think it's really good compared to what we got in issue two. Um, what issue what is this one? 70. They've had 70 issues to get this right. And for the most part, they have. They have, like I say, missed certain bits here and there. Um, um, like the glaring omission that is the cell pylon there I, I'm probably able to sort that out to get a bit of I think even pencil I think will sort that I think because it's just a little bit odd you know um, so yeah they've got the, the clear de deflector dish which is good um, but all in all not bad um, I don't like to rate mine but I would give it a solid seven, um, just for those just minor details, because that's just irritating. Like these need to be a bit smaller. They need to paint these in a bit. All and systems are functioning within normal parameters. Sorry, me, me uh, screen server. And that is in the wrong place. It needs to be up into this section here a bit more. But other than that, you know, I'm quite quite like it. It's really good. Um, it looks like the Enterprise here. Um, let me just see if I can find the John Lightning one. No, I can't. I've moved it and I can't remember where I've put it. But yeah, not too bad. Uh, oh, they have missed off the um, the, the thrusters on, on the saucer section here. They're missing a bit of paint and it should say... I mean, it's you're not going to get it on here. But it, on this docking port here, it should say Enterprise 1701. I mean, it's tiny, tiny, tiny. So, you know, it's not, that's just not too bad. But all in all, yeah, not bad at all. Not bad at all. And it fits on exactly the same way as the uh, refit. Fits on the stand, like, oh, what did it say on the bottom there? It just says US Enterprise 17018. And it fits on the stand, like so. And it's really good. Very good. And it's going to go with my other Enterprises, which are behind me here. Uh, there's a space to be reserved for it, so yeah. So there we go. That's the um, US Enterprise one seven zero one A, and I will catch you later. Bye for now.